Hey, everybody. Welcome back. So the next speaker is somebody I had on my podcast show not that long ago. I love interviewing Australians. You guys are fun. Uh, but the next one is Christine Cronow. She's a nutritional author, speaker, entrepreneur, mother of two. She is the author of a book called The Fat Revolution. Has anybody read that book? Yes. You like the book? Yes. All right. So if you don't have a copy, they are selling copies back there with that uh, cute gentleman that's waving at you. Yes, I told him he was cute. I, I'm very good in my manhood, yes. All right, and we're gonna leave it at that. She also has another book called The Great Health is a Piece of Cake, christinecronow.com. Welcome, Christine. saturated fat. So has anyone heard the joke about the heart healthy cardiologist diet? If it tastes good, spit it out. <laughs> what a terrible way to live and so many people are living like this every single day. Oh, it's absolutely tragic. Now we've all heard the low fat message, reduce your fat, especially saturated fat. And many of you have probably been avoiding saturated fat for most of your lives. So you might find this topic slightly confronting, but hopefully, maybe a little bit exciting. And others of you have probably heard now that saturated fat might be good for you, but you might be too nervous to try it. Or you might be wondering, well, how much is too much? And some of you might be in suspense at the idea of getting a free pass to eat butter and bacon again. So whatever you're thinking or feeling, I'll show you why the low fat movement didn't work, why you'll never have to diet again, and why, the low, and why the vilification of fat was the biggest health mistake in history. I'll also explain why eating more fat will actually help you lose weight and boost your health and vitality. So how does that sound? <laughs> now just in case you're sitting there thinking or wondering, has she ever been on a diet in her life? Well, this was me in my early 20s. I started struggling with my weight around 18 and I tried all kinds of diets. Now, I normally started that diet on a Monday. Anyone else do that? <laughs> now, that Monday was absolutely tragic, but day two was almost always a lot easier, and that's because by then, it was well and truly over. <laughs> I was terrible at dieting. Now, if you're feeling slightly skeptical and thinking, well, she looks all right now, but wait till she has a couple of kids and hits the middle-aged spread. I remember someone telling me the middle-aged spread was unavoidable and would definitely hit me in my mid-30s. This is me at 42 after my two beautiful children. <laughs> and one of whom just graduated from high school yesterday. And the important thing here is I've been this same weight for over a decade. I never think about how much I eat. I never diet, I never count calories. And I love to eat. In fact, I eat all those forbidden foods. Butter, bacon, eggs, whipped cream, the whole shebang. In fact, some of you would be quite shocked at just how indulgent I am with food. A few months ago, my husband saw my breakfast plate and said, man, that looks like a trucker's breakfast. <laughs> and that's because it looked something like that. And that's pretty typical of what I would eat in a day, in the morning. So, I actually love what I do because it's making a profound difference in people's lives. I receive daily success stories, and not just about the weight loss, but all kinds of health improvements. And in the 10 years that I've studied health and nutrition, I've discovered that the majority of the things we're being told about health are incorrect. So that's why I actually now feel obligated to share what I know. So how did we get this so wrong? I'm going to show you this fun little clip from the brilliant documentary Fathead, which Jimmy talked about before, which explains it beautifully. I've just got to plug in the sound. Yes, Mr. 
Now, did anyone notice it was called a hypothesis? Well, it's still called that today, and that's because it was simply an idea that was never proven, and in fact, hundreds of studies have now shown absolutely no correlation between saturated fat intake and heart disease. So what few people know is that we've been eating saturated fat for millions of years. Can you still hear me okay? Two and a half million to be precise, with no instances of heart disease and no obesity. That stuff came much later on, only really in the last hundred years. Now, some skeptics love to say, oh, but when we were hunter-gatherers, we didn't live very long. But that's not actually the case. The science shows us that if we avoided the natural elements like saber-toothed tigers, we lived a very long time. And in fact, our longevity shortened once we started eating grains and other modern foods. And the more the, <coughs> the, more the food changes, the more we change. So, in fact, it's not just our health that's declining. It's our face shape and physical attributes as well. So have a look at these beautiful African children. Can everyone see through this? We're working with the microphone. So they've got beautiful straight teeth and lovely wide faces. When we changed our diet, our jaw started to narrow, which causes crooked teeth, and other malformations are extremely common. So you start to see children with eyes too close together, lopsided ears, uh, large protruding foreheads. I know it seems shocking, but it's simply a case of malnutrition. So we've been healthy and robust for millions of years. So what happened in the 1900s especially to change that? It's been blamed on saturated fat, so did we suddenly start eating more? We didn't. In fact, as you can see, fat, saturated fat consumption's come down, but we did start producing vegetable oil, margarine and shortening, and we started mass producing sugar. In fact, between 1890 and 1920, sugar consumption doubled. And that's because we saw the birth of the very first confectionery and soda companies. So by 1926, we had our very first documented case of heart disease. And by the 1950s, it was extremely common and experts were scrambling for a solution. Unfortunately, they picked the wrong one. So what's the truth about fat? Well, fat actually can't make us fat. It's physiologically impossible. And that's because some foods prompt our body to store fat and some don't. So that's why it's meaningless to count calories because we all know fat has more calories than just about anything else, but it simply doesn't it's not stored as fat, so what is? Well, when we eat sugar and carbohydrates, we produce a hormone called insulin, which helps us get glucose into our brain and our cells. But the important thing here is that we can only use a very small amount at any one time, which means when we, produce, when we eat extra, we have to store the rest as fat. But this is not a bad process. This is actually necessary for times of famine. The problem is that we have access now to way too many carbohydrates, so we're doing this constantly producing too much insulin, which then means we have to store fat. Eventually the body gets sick of this entire process, stops producing insulin, then we have diabetes. And as a very interesting side point, what happens when we can no longer get this glucose into our brain? Our brain cells die and then we have Alzheimer's, which is why they call it type 3 diabetes. And no matter what you hear in the media, that disease is completely preventable. There is one other culprit, and that's fructose. I won't talk about it too much because it's been well and truly dealt with. 
but it actually doesn't spike your blood sugar, which is why it's been dubbed the healthy alternative, but it goes straight to your liver. Again, we can only handle a very small amount, so when we eat too much, we have to store it as fat, and it makes us sick. So fat doesn't make us fat, but what about heart disease? Experts insist on a direct link between saturated fat intake and heart disease, but as saturated fat consumption comes down, heart disease goes up. So what's the real cause? Well, experts have been shocked to find that this build-up in our arteries is not actually saturated fat. Does anyone know what it is? It's polyunsaturated fat, which comes from those heart-healthy veggie oils. And study after study also shows that sugar is directly related to heart disease in a couple of different ways. So when we eat sugar, we produce inflammation, which again thickens our arteries, but also it develops, we develop these sharp little sugar crystals in our blood. They actually nick the side of our blood vessel, causes a scab, that doesn't seem so bad, but then that scab gets nicked, which causes a bigger scab. And that process continues until you can kind of see what's happening. So this process is called acute thrombosis. And it's why many diabetics have limbs removed, because their arteries are so blocked that they can no longer be repaired. It's also why most diabetics will actually die from heart disease. Now our experts know about this, but they don't put two and two together, and they continually advocate heart healthy, low fat products loaded with sugar. It's very sad. So, heart Saturated fat does not cause heart disease, but is it harmful to go on a low fat diet? And the answer is yes, because we need fat and cholesterol for many reasons. I hope you guys can see that up the back, but I'll run through it. So here are just a few of them. There's many, many reasons. We need it for our cells. Our cell membrane is 50% fat, saturated fat. So we need saturated fats to keep those stable. This is the most important one, it's a healing agent. So if our glucose is really high, our cholesterol is probably sky high as well. And that's because it's trying to heal the inflammation. If we take that cholesterol away, then we've taken away our protection from the inflammation and also from heart disease. That's also why cholesterol tends to go up as we get older. It's the most powerful antioxidant there is and we're constantly trying to lower it. We need fat and cholesterol for our organs, including our lungs, which is why a lot of little ones who don't have enough fat in their diet will suffer from asthma and respiratory illnesses. We need fat and cholesterol for our emotions, especially our feel-good hormone, serotonin. We need fat and cholesterol for our sex hormones, including testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, we also need fat and cholesterol for our energy, which is why so many people are now struggling with fatigue. Now, if you have a look at all these, a lot of these are related. Is it any wonder that many people have trouble here? They don't feel good. They have zero sex hormones and they're fatigued. Now we also need fat and cholesterol for our reproduction, which is why so many people are struggling with fertility these days. And if we don't get enough fat and cholesterol, we get old before our time. Now there are three reasons why we're aging faster now than we ever have before in history. Number one, we need that fat and cholesterol to keep those, our skin cells hydrated. Number two, those heart healthy vegetable oils actually damage the cell membrane, which causes wrinkles. And number three, sugar is the number one ager, it destroys collagen. 
So I've got a triple whammy of premature ageing going on. Now the last one, if we lower cholesterol with a drug, then we've increased our risk for muscle damage, brain damage, infancy, and cancer. And low cholesterol itself increases our risk for premature death. And that is a fact that's never been disputed in any scientific study or journal. So why does no one know about it? It's because cholesterol medication is the biggest selling prescription medication in the world. So we've established, hopefully, that we need fat and cholesterol, but can we eat too much of it? What do you guys think? I can see a big no down here. Anyone else? Yeah, the answer is no. Surprisingly, oh, it's on the wrong slide. Surprisingly, the answer is no. Now, primal groups thrived on very high fat diets. The Inuit ate around 80% fat. And in addition, it's impossible to overeat fat because it's the only food that produces our fullness hormone, CCK. So that's why when you're eating carbohydrates, you can eat and eat and eat and eat and never feel satisfied or full. It's very different when you're eating fats. Now, if you're still feeling slightly worried about gaining weight if you eat fat, in addition to other fats, our family eats over two kilos of butter every week. And as you can see, it doesn't make us fat. And if you think we're exercising it off, it's not about the exercise. Now, I love exercise for many reasons, but when it comes to weight loss, it's completely unnecessary. And that's because if we're fattening ourselves with the wrong food, no amount of exercise is going to help. That's why you can see dancers who might be exercising seven or eight hours a day, but they can still be overweight. Now, Terry's a great example. She's here in the audience, by the way. So, and she's a personal trainer, so go and say hello if you need some help. Now, she always loved to exercise, but the results didn't show until she changed her diet, and that's very, very common. In addition, if you do too much exercise or the wrong type of exercise, then you actually prompt your body to store fat because you produce too much stress hormone. So, in summary, fat does not make us fat. It certainly doesn't cause heart disease, and it's actually sugar, excess grain, and vegetable oils that are the true culprits behind heart disease and just about every other modern disease. Now I know sometimes it's easier to just eat whatever we want, even if it does make us sluggish and heavier than we'd like, but at what cost? Most of us plan our financial retirement, but we forget to plan our health. So invest the time in your health today and you can save a measurable amount of time later in life when others of a similar age are struggling with illness and disease. And if you can do that, eating butter, bacon, eggs, crispy duck, pork crackling and whipped cream, then why wouldn't you want to join the fat revolution? <laughs> Woo!